to Facial Recognition Comedy Podcast. My name is Jackie Zabrowski. I'm Fizza Dasani. I'm Paula Vegan Allen. I'm Zara Ali. Welcome, Jackie. Hell yeah. Thank you guys so much Jackie. for having me. You have the best voice. Thank she you. Has an amazing voice. It's hey. it's fairly raspy, but you know what? It's recognizable. It is. <laughs> and you you use it because you are you are on three podcasts on the last podcast network? I'm yeah, I'm currently uh we're doing uh we have I've got two current podcasts uh, as of right now, but I also do a lot of voiceover work. Yeah. We yeah, do yeah, a lot of yeah well deserved. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I just I just came from the movies before we started recording today, and I think you need to to be the movie announcer person like please you, please can you say can you say in a world in a world oh, <laughs> or is that so too good. much is that too no I, th- I think well pablo francisco the comedian he has the whole like bit around like the movie announcer voice oh, and yeah. stuff but like i feel like you do it so much better thank you very much i feel like you could be the movie announcer of our generation i want to weasel in there people always ask we... like how do you get into voiceover work i'm like it takes a lot so, you, it ha- it's the actual magic so yeah qu- r- random question did you have to cultivate this voice or is it something that Were you you know, born with you, it? Yeah, did you always have I a- was born this way. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Damn, that's yeah. good. Also, years of smoking. So. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I 100% was going to say, I'm I, like, say what it is, Jack. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I meant by cultivating. Yeah, so, but I, I always had a very deep voice, even yeah. in high school, which yeah. is why I always just, did I got, Did you get made like, fun of? Yeah. I got made fun of so much for so my much. voice. So, like, my parents were like, does she smoke? Does she smoke? And I'm like, I'm 11. Like, what? I don't. Yeah, I sounded like this before, too. When did you start smoking? When I was like nineteen, okay. So it's definitely it's definitely been too much time. But um, oh, but I did sound like this in middle school yeah. and in high school as well. So of course, and I played softball. Yeah. And so <laughs> man, that is just giving people fodder yeah. to just oh, make. And I was fat, very very fat. So um, you know, I uh, I it makes you grow. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, character building. Yes. That's what they say. That's what they call it. I think husky voices are so sexy it's though. So sexy. Yeah. Like I want to. I want my voice to be deep. When I get sick, I just love my voice. Oh, like, yeah. Throat sore. You're trying to, like, submit all your voiceovers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to do all of our podcasts yeah. when my voice is too. You have a raspy <laughs> voice right into yeah. the mic. <laughs> like, my voice is so high. Yeah. But I also always wanted that, though. It's Grass is always greener. Yeah. I mean, Curly I always hair, wanted. Straight hair. And I always just, I was like, I just wish I sounded more like a girl, and which is a horrible, like, sexist thing no, to say. you sound, but... like, profound. Like, you have something to say, Thank you know? Thank you. It's I great. actually yelled at a child on Clearwater beach last year because he was just like this dude and he kept trying this boy kept trying to take my pool noodle that i had at the beach dude, because i'm terrified of the I'm water i'm possessive of pool noodles as well take my noodle because i'm scared of the water and yeah. he kept taking it and then he's like you sound like a boy and i was like well i make a lot of money on my voice thanks a lot <laughs> get your own noodle you should have just said you you ate the last boy who took the, your pool noodle <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god face and that's the voice i'm using right now <laughs> but it is sad though in my early 30s that I still get offended by young children making fun of me. That is so funny. I think funny. it just cuts deep, man. Yeah, I dude. love that Spit you're using truth. I love that you're using it to terrorize little boys. Yeah, man. <laughs> Cuz more little boys need to be terrorized Don't by women. You just me run, down. You're just running around going, "What's the definition of consent?" <laughs> <laughs> As I'm swimming after him but yeah. also crying cuz yeah. I don't have my pool noodle. Oh my um, I get it though. One time I I got into sort of a a cold war with a cat. Ooh. I, I feel felt, like all cats are in cold wars with people, right? No, but like, okay, this one had been abused and Aww. I was feeling particularly vulnerable and I wanted to pet it and it freaked out and I took it personally. And then my friend had to tell me to stop fighting with the cat. I understand. I had a cat that I was terrified of yeah. for a while because it's like my ex, uh, my ex had moved out. And he, the, the cat loved him more. And the cat had one eye. Her name was Pips, and she was evil. I actually have scars all over my stomach oh, from when she would attack me, when she would oh hide gosh. in things, and then dig her claws into my stomach and not let go. That's just stretch marks of having your own. Is that what it is? <laughs> your own fur oh baby. My God. <laughs> <laughs> scratch the shit out of you. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a Zorro, Zorro scar on my neck from a cat. Oh, oh wow. I do branded see it. you. You can't yeah. trust them. Well, I actually like cats. You know, I, I'm someone, fine with cats. I like yeah. cats. I think I respect them too much, and and so I'm just like, you stay over there, and I enjoy your your presence, but just don't. Let's not interact. They have boundaries. Yes, cats they have set their boundaries. Boundaries. Yes, you can learn a lot from cats, right? Hell yeah. 
Hakuna yeah. Matata, right? Hakuna ma fuck it. Hakuna ma fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, your, that's your saying. I've been trying to your... figure out how, I think I might get it tattooed on my body, but I was like, do I want to commit to having an obscenity tattooed on my body? And the answer is yes. Yeah. yeah. I think Wait, I'm so not much of that's, where does, yes. that's her sign off on all of her Instagram captions. Also, yeah. like, cafe. sometimes I try to, it. like, read your Instagram captions and I'm like, I need a translator. Like, this is a lot, but that's, like, your culture. It's my it's language. Like language. Yes, yeah. Japanese. Yeah. That's what I refer to it as. So how did, where did you come up with this mantra of yours, this closing statement of Akuna. Fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually uh, Ed Larson from the brighter side bought yeah. me a t-shirt that said it years and years ago and it was a t-shirt it was like when I was at my heaviest and it was something that like I've now cut down into like shards and like put it together because it's like this is always how I felt because you know I, I, I've always been kind of uh, attacked in a lot of ways in my life and so I, I want to cultivate I think also through the year of straight mushroom intake that I had um, <laughs> that I just want to be more peaceful you know and uh, Hakuna Mafaka I think is a really it's like it means uh, fuck it yeah. were you microdosing your- or it was full on shrooms uh, yes and no yeah all of it. Tomato, tomato. you know tomato. what? I, I'm a lot chiller. I also, I went through anger management for a very long time. Yeah. So it, that was like after a lot of like building of myself and trying to gain control of my anger. And I was like, you know, what? and also I was dating someone at the time. I was like, you should do shrooms all the time. I was like, yeah, you're right. Which that's dumb. So anger uh, management, was that rep- like, what, what brought you to anger management? What was, Did something yeah, happen? What was, was the incident? root of your anger? I was a bully. I was a bully in middle school. Uh, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, but I also was. Uh, uh, I mean, with that voice, there isn't like you need to take a role. I was also the- three hundred <laughs> pounds <laughs> when I was twelve years old. I was almost three hundred pounds. So when we moved, my brother and I do comedy together. When we moved from New York to Florida, and everyone was thin and everyone was tan, and we looked the way we looked, and so they would throw food at me every oh my day. Gosh. People held me down and like actually shoved food oh. down. my my Jesus. mouth, like in front what? of teachers, and no one ever did anything. And one day, I just snapped. And I wait. Just... The teachers never did anything. No. What What is going on in Florida? <laughs> Look, it's, why does Florida it's get a pass for like human decency? It's It's really it, it is really insane because it's public it was, school. I assume it was public yeah. school, and also Florida public school's rough. And that's it, that's just how it was. That's and crazy. they really didn't care. So I kind of snapped. And one day, I took one of the girls by the back of the hair, and I just smashed her face oh, into a locker over and over again. And then from then on, everyone was terrified. Wow. Did they do something about that? Did right. you get in trouble oh, for that? Did I get suspended yeah. from? school you got yeah. suspended yeah, but, they didn't suspended. Do anything. but no one else got any discipline for bullying bullying you for however no, long that no, went on no and it was yeah. just always that kind of thing too where their parents had a lot of money and our family didn't have that much money and it really came down to that yeah. And, yeah. and so i would go through like the peer mediation and go through all that where i'd have to sit down because then the fury was released so then i was a bully to people that bullied other people mm-hmm. but people were actually legitimately scared of me so they would sit me down in peer mediation where you have to sit I don't know if you've ever had to go I through was, peer I mediation. was a peer mediator and yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah I was I did peer court like I yeah. was one of the but yeah. workers, I, I think it's so silly to make someone that is bullying someone sit in a room and talk about your feelings if yeah. you have an anger problem yeah. or just like I'm just gonna beat the shit out of you after this yeah. and that's kind of what it was until I went into anger management yeah. when did you go into anger management I was 14 and then what, so you said you've grown like a lot from that. What are your like coping strategies? What have, what have you found that's worked for you? I mean, I have, de- I'm still in therapy. Yeah. That is now I'm just in a forever therapy. Yeah. But I now, I, I communicate very effectively. I talk about all of my issues. I am the least passive aggressive person you will ever meet. I can't hide my feelings sometimes to a fault, but I don't let myself get to what I used to refer to as the red when I would just be blind with rage. Yeah. And now I like red from us, you know, just, Oh my God, it's just <laughs> like us. My life is us. We so were I just, just talking about that my movie. Face. Yeah. But then is now a spoiler? I, uh, no. it's just the name of a character. Oh, okay. Yeah. From yeah. Us. Yeah. yeah. But now I uh, I write in my journal and I do I do a lot of breathing exercises. If I get really angry, I'll go into a bathroom or someplace I can be by myself. So do you still get to that place where you yeah. do get triggered to a place where you're very angry? Mm. Is but that your go-to? Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Not not so much anymore because I don't put it at other people. Now it's more but you know what? towards myself. Anger feels better than sadness. That's the issue. Yeah. But now I uh, now I deal with 
sadness overtaking anger and I almost wish that I was still angry rather than sad yeah. but I'm also manic depressive so you know that's just that's it goes with the territory high five hell yeah when so, were you diagnosed in 2009 uh I was oh you don't know how old I am I was no. uh that no, was, no no was you don't have to tell me when oh, okay. 20 so yeah, it's been yeah. about 10 years yeah. 10 years ago okay yeah cool. why how long have you been 2012 Hell yeah. yeah. Welcome to the club. Yeah, it's very, it's a, a lot of life events, right? Right, guys? <laughs> yeah. They have to yeah. deal with my, they have to hear about my ups and downs. Oh, there are many ups and downs. Sometimes within it's just a minute. for no reason. Sometimes just within a minute. Yep. I'm sad. I'm happy. I'm ah. Mm -hmm, okay. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, wh like, so with anger management, so you were in it since you were 14. Like, was your family like accepting of that? Like, did they, they were down for it? Oh, very much so. And my, then, yeah. Did they have tools to help you? Did they also like try to seek therapy and figure out how to? Yeah, oh, which that's was amazing. Great. That's yeah. amazing. Cause I, I don't know. I grew up in a household that didn't really understand what like the talk therapy is. Right. Yeah. And now we're kind of going through it now, all of us as grown ups. So I can appreciate a household that like, like understands that there is an issue and like you all rally together to fix it through right. therapy and family counseling and all of that. It did take so. some time though yeah. in the beginning because of course it's the whole like there's nothing wrong with my child. She's perfect. She doesn't do anything oh, wrong. Yeah. It's like no, 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 no. Yeah, I think that's hard for parents to accept that. Like yeah. I think with with my quote unquote issues I think my parents were, at least my father was in denial for a while. It was just, too, it was not palatable to think that your your kid's suffering this way or something's wrong. It, they kind of take it as like a reflection of their parenting. Exactly. Did and they think that up? they did it to you. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like, it's just my brain chemicals, man. Yeah. It's all good. Which like, is also kind of their fault, you know, because yeah. <laughs> they got their genes. <laughs> so it's not, I mean, it's not entirely like, you know. Because they're, they're going through shock because it's like, oh, did I, I, I gave this to you. I, I made you. So some of this is, you know, my fault. Right. Yeah. It was interesting. Um, the Indian community in Utah, there was like a loss. Uh, and they didn't say it was suicide, but I, we think that one of the, the kids, you know, committed suicide when he was at college. And then I went to a dinner back in Utah and it was like all these Indian people, but the parents were like much more open to talking about stuff. And they're like, we have to talk about this because we're losing our kids. And it's like, it's, it's interesting to watch like our parents evolution in oh, their yeah. lifetime. Like right. they've where they came from and where they are now is like, so the, it's so different. Like I can't even imagine growing up in a world where like, you didn't know what a period was. You're just handed a tampon or yeah. not even a, a pad. And then now you have to like come to the realization that like depression is a thing, like non-physical things right. are things when you didn't even talk about the physical stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I mean, and that's even just my grandmother was severely bipolar, never diagnosed and was just a nightmare human being that essentially my grandfather father just kind of kept in the house and pretended like she just didn't exist so many enablers which is insane yeah. so it's like my mom grew up with that where she's like there's definitely something wrong with mom because she's and then, beating me almost to death and then you, well, you have to yeah. carry that much shame you yeah. know like just being hidden from the world that's yeah. gonna really ding you up yeah and, and it also is just going to make you go further and further into your own mental illness because yeah. mm -hmm. no one is accepting or talking about it so that is just something that is it's so scary now that even when I think about me having children that it's like, I don't want to pass that on, but at least we do have the tools that past generations didn't have. And the stigma isn't as rough as it used to and, be. And <laughs> you're well versed in it. I think like you can't predict what a kid is going to end up like, what their chemistry is going to end up like and how they're going to cope. But if you are educated and you know the tools that you have and you're doing everything you can in your lifetime to like help yourself, that's the best like parent for like a kid to go out in the world with, you know? Like, But also even in the story you were just saying about the parents that are actually like want to start talking yeah. now, because I also have had friends that have committed suicide in the past that their parents still are just like, Someone did something to them. There's there. Oh, this There's has no, nothing to yeah. do with mental. Like we don't need to talk about it. They were just um, you know, they just they uh, can't cope with they it. They can't cope with it. It was yeah. their fault. Adding it was their tragedy problem. to tragedy. Right. Yeah. That's really that's really uh hard to deal with. Um, but it's yeah. I think it's good that we like we're all talking about it. Do you, and you have you you have a brother. I do, yes. And you do comedy together, mm -hmm. and he, uh, you both work on the Last Pod Podcast Network <laughs> Yes, together. we do, yeah. My brother my brother works for, he's on Last Podcast on the left. His name is Henry Zabrowski, and we have, we've been best friends our entire lives. So that is amazing that you could be best friends with your sibling. Are you yeah. guys super close in yeah. age? Yeah. 
Uh, where he's three years older than I am. Okay. But he even just like, when I first, I moved out here about a year and a half ago and it was after ending an 11 year relationship and I was in shambles yeah. and I was living in New York and he was like, come out here, come live with me. Let's, why don't you just start your life over again and LA get out a, of there? LA is a Be, good refresh button. I is. did something similar, leaving New York after a broken heart, after a broken a bunch of things. Yeah. I moved out here and it actually like helped. And then, and then like <laughs> once you're assimilated and acclimated, you're just like, no, all that stuff that's inside my brain is still there. Oh, you it's know? still there. Like for that sure. stuff never goes away. But, but now I'm just trying to not yeah. get blackout drunk every single day. <laughs> I'm actually like going to the gym and doing all the things that LA puts in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Life's life. a little easier here in LA than it yeah. versus the East Coast. So we have the luxury of dealing with existential issues, which is why we're all so sad. Oh, we're yeah. sad here. <laughs> New York. It's always sunny and we're really sad. New York, though, like, like everybody warned me that everyone there was an alcoholic and then i was like eh, whatever and then i got went there and i got drunk oh yeah drunk. so dr it happened so quickly yes. <laughs> it's just like an easy way to pass the time and it's like you're working i mean it's like a whole like work hard play harder type of town and, and you're not driving you're not driving and everything's open so late everything's yeah. open till 4 a.m so yeah as long as you can make it to work and somewhat and in some much somewhat of a manageable presence like you're fine you could be an alcoholic for decades without dealing with it i mean i worked I was a manager of a bakery for eight years in Brooklyn. And so I would have to get up at four o'clock in the morning, but I would be yeah. at the bar until two 30. Mm -hmm. I'd go sleep, like pass out for just like 45 minutes, get back up, <laughs> go to work, still drunk, but still doing my job. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. why didn't ever, like no one ever said anything. And I'm also drinking with all of my coworkers. Because so everybody like, else is doing the same hammer. shit. You're all like being alcoholics and there's, together. There's a manic energy in New York. Oh yeah. So it's like, you can, I don't, I don't drink much, but like in New York, I, 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 my tolerance is just I can I yeah. can go yeah. yeah yeah and then everybody picks a day to crash you know yes. like you have that one day in a week where you just sleep for nineteen hours yep. and then you and then you do it again you do it all over again but people don't hang out here the way that they hang out That's in true. New York it's very, uh, it's I'm, isolating I'm so lonely. spread out I miss the hanging out I'm I do so miss lonely that. all the time yeah like all these girls have the thing have the thing where Zara likes to party and which is like no I don't like. I just miss the 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 camaraderie yeah. that like we had in New York, which is like easy to have because it's like after you share a long day at work, you go out, you like have like, a, you know, a few hours together and then, you know, like you forge relationships better with people out there than yeah. you, and New York than you is, can here. It's a little more compact. You know, Manhattan's an island here. Yeah. It's just like I, when I moved here, it took me so long to feel like I found a community. And yeah. even now I grapple with that because you outgrow stuff. It's just like, okay, well, well I'm also in a the comedy community, where, it's questionable yeah, <laughs> whether, every, you know, we like each other. Everything's so like isolating here too. Like everybody's in their car or, you know, it's everything's, everything is created to like isolate you in LA and everybody's working on different projects here. Whereas I feel like in New York it's like if you're in comedy it's like mostly comedy right right and then here are people like when they're not doing comedy they're like acting and doing these and so nobody has time for each other here right yeah. and mo I, I also work in audiobooks and things like that so all I do is sit in a room and talk to myself yeah most a days. padded room yeah oh it is oh and yeah. it's bad because I definitely punch sometimes just because I'm just like I can't listen to the sound of my own voice for another second you gotta leave do you have do you have like just hours planned out where you leave and get some social interaction I think it's back? part of the reason why I I, I mean uh, among many other things of why I can't stop smoking because it's like the way that like I it forces me yeah. to leave the studio that is in my home so that's like I'm just gonna sit out here and yeah. get some fresh I know that you can replace Fresher. it with other things but I also like and kicked, you're in a home studio yes and That's, I kept yeah. like drinking every single day too so it's like I'm not drinking all the time I have no other vices I'm just gonna smoke these cigarettes when I yeah. when I was hanging out with you and, and like all the last uh podcast network guys like you guys went out and took like a couple breaks with cigarettes and I was just like I'm not used to this oh yeah like, it's definitely an east I feel like that's also an east coast thing like even I was in Pittsburgh which is an east coast but it was like over there and I would literally like pick days like I would decide if I want Wanted to hang out with my friends or breathe because I was just like, yeah, oh, I yeah. can't be around this smoke all the time. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's yeah, but got that voice. Living and die. <laughs> Living and I mean, die. I don't know. I love I, that voice. Is smoking cigarettes an East Coast thing? I mean, I like. No I have one friends. smokes here. Well, I know no yeah. one smokes here because yeah. it's LA, it's Hollywood. Everyone's trying to look like 19 years younger than they are. Um, <laughs> I think big cities, West Coast, like not as many people smoke as in big cities, East yeah. Coast. I, Maybe. I mean, that could be it. But like I have friends from high school who've been smoking since high school. So yeah. I don't know if that's an East Coast thing or just, you know, some things that people pick up when they're bad.
had kids and yeah. then they just never put it down. Mm, I think I it know. might be that. It's just like, well, also, I had a pretty, um, pretty rough speed addiction for about five or six years. So I think that kind of went hand in hand with things, too, of just like, well, you know, if you're doing a bunch of speed, may as well smoke a bunch of cigarettes. Yeah. You know? Were you self-medicating yeah. with the speed? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, what, anything that had anything, any kind of upper, I would take lots of. You, okay. I was just going to ask if you still have the pull to self-medicate. No. Oh, wow. I mean, again, it's very difficult for me to smoke, stop smoking yeah. cigarettes. So I would say that is more of, you know, in yeah. that realm. I definitely use the whole CBD route now, yeah. which is really good very for me. LA. It's very LA. But, you know, you got to lean into something. Yeah. What, uh, can I ask what your, like, rock bottom was? Like, how you got out of it? Um, it was my college graduation. And actually, my older brother was, a, he came to my graduation, and it was the by far the thinnest I had ever been. But it wasn't, it, I was probably around this weight, but I had not eaten in at least like like I was just not eat. I had eaten like an apple in the past like four days, oh my and my cheeks were so sunken in, and my eyes were just so dark and bloodshot, and I was on like my anger and everything. Like I was either sobbing or screaming, and he just sat me down. And he was because I was moving to New York to do comedy with Murder Fist, which is the sketch group yeah. we started in college, and I, I I continued it after they left, and we did Murder Fist in New York, mm -hmm. and he's like, if you want to come to New York and do comedy with us, you're going to stop all the shit. He's like, I won't, I won't work with you. I won't talk to you ever again. And I won't work with you ever again. So intervention, that, something. that's all it took from your that brother. Is, you just needed to say your brother needed to say that. Yes. And you were like, all right, I'm going to change my way. And I stopped. Wow. I, re I really just, I, I haven't touched any of it since it was rough. But it was, uh, it, he, he, my brother has saved my life multiple times. How was that withdrawal? You seven bad. years of speed use? Yeah. Real bad. Really, really bad. How long did it last approximately? It was about three months oh, that wow. I puked. And uh, that was when I graduated college. First so trimester. Yeah. I mean, essentially, yeah, it <laughs> yeah. was it was bad. It was really bad. And then I gained a bunch of weight back and it was the whole. That's got to be so hard for like, like body dysmorphia with like, you're like, I'm doing this thing and it's like the weight that I want or whatever. And then you get rid of it and it's like all this pain. And then also like having to adjust to a new outside. Like right. that's yeah. got to be. So and tough. as for women, when your body, when you're, when you can like visually see your body's changing and things don't fit you anymore, it like fucks with you in another way. Oh yeah, because we have all these other expectations for us as women on that we need to be perfect and like people like me better when I'm thinner or whatever. And it's like you're dealing with that. You're dealing with withdrawal. You're dealing with just got out of college, yeah. moving to a new city, New York of all those things. Oh, yeah. And, you know, trying to make it in fucking comedy, which is like the hardest thing in the world. That's Very a transition silly. if I've ever heard one. Yeah, it was really it was rough. But now, but it is insane, though, looking back where it's like, I really thought in so many, I like almost tried to kill myself in so many different ways. Intentionally and or yes. subconsciously And it's well. just, it's really that now... That that's why I think I do do the shrug of like, I mean, yeah, I still smoke cigarettes and I really shouldn't. But of all the things I used to do and also all the like years of bulimia and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, you know, I am technically still the healthiest yes, I've yeah. ever been yeah. in my life. I mean, we all we all have our vices, you yeah. know, and if this is the one vice that you can rationalize. You know, I you guess. Know. But, did, you know. Did, um, I'm getting so deep into these questions. I'm sorry. Go for it. No, no, no. No, no I love it. I'm doing it if that's okay. Okay, you tell yeah, me, of course. You tell me when to stop. Um. Did your you said you were in a rough relationship for a while? Did yeah. that enable like these uh, hard habits of very yours? much so? Because we started dating because um, we were together for eleven years, and we started dating was when we just did speed together all oh, the time. Geez. Wow! So, so you then, started dating in college. Yeah. He was the guy He's, that like you would have speed with. Yeah, yeah. you started okay. dating and addiction. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, all in one. Yeah, and then outside of that, he, like we would break up every like three three years, and then I would go fuck everything under the sun and then I would go back to him yeah. and did like that kind of thing but he was the one that so after I stopped doing all the speed then we just became insane alcoholics like really it's like really whack-a-mole it's yeah. like yeah. if you cut one thing out another thing's gonna another pop, thing's out. Gonna pop up it's like I gotta self-soothe somehow yeah and so that and so we Cope. just fed yeah and even days that I didn't want to drink it was the only way we could communicate with each other 
effectively whatsoever. And uh, and even though I can uh, communicate with so many people about my feelings and and everything else, I couldn't talk to him about it. Yeah. It's so weird. Like I take public trans a lot, and there are like all these couples that are on something together and just like causing a ruckus in the cars. And it's like it's weird because you're like they're not on our level, but they're definitely on a level on each together. Other's level. Yeah, you can like see the bond between them, even if it's like that painful or right. that like toxic. Do you think it was a trauma bonding with you and your ex? I think that it was just the kind of thing that it was easy. So, and we never had to talk about anything. Yeah. So we just didn't. And mm. we just kind of sat in that. And then by the end, he decided he wanted to become Polly after being monogamous with me for 11 years. And then I just realized, oh, you're just cheating on me, which is why you're like, but what if we're poly and then we can sleep with other people? And then I was like, oh, no, no, no. But isn't it? I thought when you're polyamorous, like your partners are all like also into each other. Is that no, not a thing? No, no. I, mean, I think no. they're different poly paradigms. I, yeah. I guess. Yeah, maybe there are different paradigms. You have different. But you, you usually it depends on the rules that you yeah. set up. I, I, I've i got a lot of poly so po friends. Is poly just like. You're just so I, I guess people. I'm trying to understand, is there a difference between an open relationship and a polyamorous? Well, well at least yes. when you're in a relationship with multiple people. Yeah, so it's okay. if you're open, it's not necessarily a relationship with multiple people. You're like in a relationship with one person, then you can like hook Fuck. up or whatever oh, okay. you want. Okay, got it. All but right. yeah. poly in indicates that there's like an emotional uh, attachment, attachment with multiple attachment as people. well. And there can be like hierarchical polyamory, like you have your main person and the it people It could be below. like a family unit. Yeah, or they yeah. can sure. you know, be involved together. It I'm depends. huge into also polygamy shows. I'm obsessed yeah. with polygamy shows. Yo, I grew up in Utah. I have so much to talk about. Oh my God. I am. I was just, we had, we also, there was a lot of the LDS in, uh, in Florida where we grew up oh, as yeah. well. So it was, I'm, uh, I'm just obsessed with the idea because I have done a lot of research of like, uh, on like sex therapy and, and relationship therapy and stuff like that. And the Is idea. Is it because of this guy? Because this no. guy wanted to go poly, or that that's like a old, your own that's personal interest. Yeah, but you, you also have a sex podcast, right? Yeah, I yeah. did yeah. sex so and other human activities, Marcus, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so, so we talked about that kind of stuff. And yeah. I just, I like the, I, I'm so intrigued by the idea of being interested in being poly or being polygamous because nowhere can I do that. I am way too much of a jealous human being and i oh, acknowledge yeah. that you don't want to share a partner no yeah no 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 i mean i I'm, think you know, I, would, oh, I can't i can't i think i would break through a wall like the kool-aid man if i saw <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Touch him. you turn red hey oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah baby I, but, I think that there's like there are a lot of people that can do the poly thing but sure. i've seen so many people just settle for it mm -hmm. because they feel like they have to that i like i also think for me i'm like like it's the same thing i'm not like jealous but i'm like I don't, I know I need a certain level of attention and I want the other person to be ambitious. So if they're ambitious, they only have so much time to spend. You exactly. Know? Yeah. And yeah. that's why, it, it, because, and that's why I think it's very funny. My boyfriend now, he's like, I can't handle more than one of you. I can't even imagine. He's like, I, you know, I know I'm a lot of woman. I, I've got a lot of feelings and I've got a lot of things to say. Mm -hmm. And if you've got the time, exactly like you just said, if you've got the time to handle more than one person, good on you. But how are you building a career in any way, shape, but or form? But what if? Meaningful um, relationship. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe... Maybe if you were ever in this scenario <laughs> where you had feelings for another person, you like really strong feelings for another person and you didn't necessarily want to let that person go and that person who you're with, they were they were OK with being, you know, the side chick or whatever. Right. You know, and with that, would you ever consider it? In that scenario, I think I'm too loyal. Okay. I am weirdly enough. We're about person. to bring out the side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Get we're gonna. I've got to fuck him in front of you guys. <laughs> All right. I'm here. I'm ready for it. I'll figure it out. I think that I'm. I'm just. I'm too loyal of a person, and I. I actually do kind of shut. I, I. Most of my career is based on me talking about how much I want to fuck celebrities. However, <laughs> I. I'm, I'm very open of the idea that like if I was attracted to someone that's not my partner. Yeah. I can't act on it. I, I've got, there's not a fiber in my being that is able to act on I it. I think I would yeah. feel too You don't even guilty. want to. No. Weird. So who are your top three celebrities here? Well, yeah, who's who the, yeah. the hall passes? Oscar Isaac. Oh. Okay. Jason Momoa, even though he's very, very dumb and really not a good actor, but I don't really <laughs> Why do you think, have you met gorgeous. him? Do you know if he's dumb or not? Yeah, he's definitely dumb. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's definitely dumb. But he's so hot, but though. He's so also nice. married to Lisa Bonet, so can you imagine the sex that they Did have? You 
did you see they just did an interview where they're on the red carpet and like this uh, white lady, Ashley something. Asked, Ashley Graham, the yeah, model. Asked yeah. him to do, what was the it? The haka. The haka um, traditional like dance. And, oh, what, yeah. and and he was like about to do it and Lisa Bonet was like, no. no. <laughs> no. She's like, We're, people call her not going to dance for you. <laughs> like she didn't say that, but that was like, it was such a shutdown. Which, so great. But it also makes sense cause, because I felt bad though for Ashley Graham, I will say, just because it's like, she's kind of a ditzy model. It's like, she doesn't know what she's doing. She was asking all celebrities to dance for her. Wait, so Ashley was, Graham is doing like interviews yeah. now? Yeah, she has like a, she has a podcast or like I know, a, a I, web yeah. series. I knew she had like something going on, but like, so is she not acting? Like what's her deal? I don't know what she's, she's doing. doing. She's okay. out there. Yeah. She's right. doing her thing. She's doing her <laughs> she's thing. She's taking the personality lane. Okay, yeah. got it. I'm a, I, she, I mean, it's a great personality, oh, yeah. but yeah. yeah. That's I mean, interesting. Yeah, I would definitely like put my face in her breasts, at least for a minute. Oh, I've had my times in college. I mean, okay. you know, if people call you a lesbian long enough. You're just like, well, I may as well try it. Yeah. I'm hanging out with the rugby team at Florida State, the female rugby team, and they're all just such attractive women, and they all like me. I may as well try. You went to FSU, so you lived in Tallahassee. Yes. How is that? <laughs> How is Northern Florida? It is. How is South Georgia, rather? It's, it, it's South Georgia. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is hick country. I've been to yeah. Tallahassee, man. Oh, what were, what were you doing in Tallahassee? Were you doing shows? No, no, this is when I was a kid. We had like a field trip or something. Oh, man. It's a rough it's a rough town because it's Florida State and also FAMU is in the same yeah. city. So it's just, there's a lot of fighting, a lot, yeah. because it's just a lot there's of a lot backwards of college kids. thinking. Yeah. And it's especially, they usually line it up because they like the drama of the FAMU homecoming versus the Florida State homecoming is usually in the same year. And there would just be open fights. So that's like in a, the almost street. like. Does that look like a race war? Yes. Because and you wouldn't leave uh, HBCU historically. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 That's where, um, and Ann Stewart went to FAMU. I think. Yeah. 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 Oh so. shit. So that's insane. That so there was a rivalry, but it, it. I mean, when you look at it from the outside, very scary. Yeah. Very very scary, and a lot of hate, and there was just no reason for it. So we would just like you know we're theater kids, so it's like I'm just gonna get a keg. And just post up my house, and we'll <laughs> see y'all next week. Because I didn't care about sports or any of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, man. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Very scary. Did you, did you feel like you grew up, like, did you f feel like you were in, like, a diverse group of friends? Or did that, like, do you feel like that happened, like, later on in your life? Or I would say that uh, growing up, because we grew up in Queens, so mm -hmm. that we had a very diverse group I was born in Queens. Friends. Dude, I love Queens. Queens, New York. I mean, so that's why we, that's were why we Were you born in back. Queens? Yeah, born in Queens. Elmer's? Hell yeah. Me too! Oh my <laughs> Yeah, yes. hospital sisters. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so so sisters. <laughs> Any, anybody born in Lubbock, Texas? Uh, no. no. Okay. Well, I'll be over here. Not but uh, in Florida, it was we had one. The only person of color we had in our entire high school was one black guy. And that was it. Which city did you grow up in? Palm Harbor, Florida. Where's Palm Harbor? It's like by Clearwater area. Oh, like or Central Florida. Central Florida, yeah. but on the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, okay. So it's like so it's more of like like country club. I'm from Fort Myers. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's like three hours yeah. north of there. I feel like we've talked about the geography of Florida so much on this podcast, and I still have no idea. <laughs> it's so big. It's so like, it's, it's so big. massive. It, it takes is eight massive. hours. It's an eight hour drive to get from the tip to the um to the base of the. Of it the is state. massive. I feel the same way about California, the though. Penis. Someone invited yeah. me to do a show in Sacramento. I was like, hell yeah. And then I was like, oh, that's mm. far from here. Yeah. I yeah. Get People, there. like, ask me to, like, go do shows in San Francisco, and they're like, yeah, you want to drive with us? I'm like, I'm sorry. Seven hours in no. a car with male comedians? No. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. that's hell. That's Maybe hell. on the way back, I'll be yes. sleeping. You guys, you know, I've done that. drive. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have a question for you. So did you, you went through culture shock when you moved from Queens to Florida very much right? so because th that was the thing too it's like I Queens mean it's so diverse oh I, my gosh yeah and yeah. I I also it's like I did the, the lip liner like my hair was oh my like goodness. gel crunch like and so that's also part of the reason why I would get made fun of because like they didn't understand you're a different you're a kid from the Queens yeah like, and they're like you are it's like because it's like you're not a Latina girl and it's like you're right but I am an Italian girl that grew up in Queens yeah. so kind of is the same thing where I come from because I'm not like 
we weren't raised. We were like appropriating a culture. It's like that's just how that's just all my culture. friends. It's yeah. like that's just what we did. That was your so culture. It was my culture. You know, yeah. funny enough, I look like that in middle school because right? that's what like J Lo looked like. That's exactly. what we all looked. we all wanted to look like J Lo. Yeah. And every time I leave the house, my dad was like, "Oh, so you're Maria now? You're just gonna be Maria." <laughs> did I just call you Maria? I'm like, what? Zara, did you have the lip liner? I had the lip. Li- I mean, yeah. I. You what know, color was your lip liner? Was my it darker lip, than it, the rest of your? Yes, lip? it was brown, and then I too. had it on like. New, like nude oh, chapstick yeah, and whatever. It was great. And then I, ha- I would like wear bandanas around my neck mm-hmm. and I had like a vest. I had the silver chain going. Oh my God, I did have cargo a pants, like the wide cargo pants. I had cargo you know? pants capris that yes, I loved. Yes, me too. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Oh, it was Coast. a rough time. This is all like East Coast fashion. It is. <laughs> this is like the year that like cargo Biggie. Pants this is like the baggage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was when like the East Coast, West Coast rivalry was happening, all that shit. Oh, like yeah. that's, uh, it was, you know, that's what was out there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. But that's why it was just such a culture. That, like we yeah. hated Florida and I still don't necessarily enjoy. I mean, it's beautiful, but there's it just nothing pretty. to do. And other than that, it's like, I'll go see my parents for three days and then we come back. You can do cities. three. See, two is when I think two and a half around that time, like around the what is it? The 40th hours when I'm like, I got to go. I got to get out yeah. of here. Are you from, wait, so are your parents still in Florida? Yeah. 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 Fort Myers still. <sighs> Same house I grew up in. <laughs> yeah, in my my mom took finally took down my legless uh, cutout that I had in my room that like the <laughs> mouth was almost completely kissed through. So kiss of who? Legolas. Legolas from Lord oh, of the Rings. Oh my god! I was just yeah. I had yeah. an argument with someone just recently where I was just uh, asking them to name like like people of color in movies that weren't villains and like th- I was like talking about Lord of the Rings because I loved Lord of the Rings like that yeah. was my shit I read it before all the movies came out yeah. watched all the movies but still we would just be orcs <laughs> like yeah. I would like yeah. we'd still just be orcs and then they were like well what if there was like an elf like orc th-? and I was like those are Urukai. they're also dark <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, all the because oh, Legolos was a fairy right and they, no yeah, he, he was, was an, an elf, elf. Yeah. Or an elf oh they were okay. and they're all blonde Please, they're all, he was an elf no, no <laughs> my bad <laughs> no, Liv Tyler's character and the father were all were, had brunette, but it was all very light skinned. Yes, yeah. And then they tried to like appease brown people by putting in like some background hobbits. Yeah, oh, <laughs> like, uh, we got some in here. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I was reading all these forums on it yesterday because it was like in my mind. I was like, I love that movie so, uh, those movies so much, and still I wouldn't be able to be. In it. You know? No, I know. I'm are you? Sorry, so though. you're you're a huge are you a huge nerd with like all of that stuff or not really? I actually just did uh on last podcast network. I I, I, st- I sat in for the on the Wizard and the Bruiser, which is like the nerd podcast for, mm-hmm. about Harry Potter, mm. because that's about the only thing in nerd cu- culture that I know a lot, a lot oh, about. You read all the books, watch all the movies. Yeah, Why am just, I not surprised there's a whole podcast dedicated to Harry Potter? Oh, I'm sure oh, there's, there's there there must be oh, multiple. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm sure there are multiple. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this one is just like, this is all just nerd culture in general. So okay. every episode like is about, like they get in depth yeah. about different. So you got in depth different Harry, sci-fi different, movies. Different, yeah, and, like different like animes and different all that kind of stuff. And I don't know all about a lot of those things because my older brother was way more into that Anime stuff. And, stuff. and so, of course, I was just like, you suck. You're an idiot. And, like, I would beg to be a part of their Dungeons and Dragons games. And I just I was allowed to be Soda Girl. Yeah. So oh, I could I could bad. marry the sodas to them. And oh, I wasn't gosh. allowed to play. But that was definitely more of a uh, sister thing. Than I have, I think I have like the a, little sister thing, too. I have an older yeah. brother. I was always trying to get in. Just please. And now that I, I, I played a, a few times with him and I was like, man. And this is like, I, I thought it was like the coolest thing of all time that they were doing. And I was like, y'all were just making up stories. Yeah. That's all you're doing. Why couldn't I make part. up stories? I want to make up stories. You would have been yeah. a great DM. Yeah. It would have been great. You know? <laughs> but now I actually play them as an adult because uh, my boyfriend is actually also a very big nerd. So I've been getting into it and learning about it. D&D? No, this, what is it called? Shadow Run. Shadow oh, Run. Runners. It's like it, it's set in the future, and um, basically, like people are becoming cyborgs. So you have different kinds what? of like. It's like I've my my name is Bunchies, and <laughs> I've, I'm 78 years old, but no one can see me because it's like it's like so I can charm anyone into getting anywhere because they're like she's an old Wait, woman. Don't worry so about it. So you're an invisible old lady. I'm not invisible. That's like every old lady in Hollywood. She's the, invisible. Exactly. You know? That's all. <laughs> except that she she's a big drug maker. 
and she's got a <laughs> cyborg arm and she keeps darts of all different kinds of things in her arms so she Tight. can get into any situation because no one pays attention wow. to her and then goes in and just murders the fuck so out of she people. uses her cyborg right. arm as storage yeah dude that's so tight <laughs> that's dope. I like my character <laughs> you get into it I feel yeah. like Comic Con must be a very special time for oh yeah I want to go you. so bad ooh I've it's been to SD Comic Con I want to go so bad that's where I passed out in the convention <laughs> the oh, San Diego I, that, those were my drug years wait oh, you, gotcha. did, yeah. you literally fainted at a, co a Comic Con yeah I, I passed San Diego. out well cause there was no food and I was sleeping yeah. on a boat it was yeah. a weird thing that sounds like a time sleeping on a boat sounds like it was a like fun a fancy story. little boat, but okay. like, you know, I'm so you were on a yacht. I was on a yacht. You were on a yacht. You could tell people no, you were on a yacht. It wasn't my yacht. There was no food. So oh, all I had no. was an edible, a weed edible. Oh, and they told it. me it was strong and I was starving and it was delicious. And I didn't drink a lot of water and oh, I was I'll probably on a lot of drugs. That'll do it. So they called the ambulance and I still owe like one of the hospitals $4,000. Oh, they can fuck. go get fucked. Two, I'm not even, I'm, I, it's like a second tier debt. So I just was like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll I'll be clear fine. up, but. Yeah. So Can every we time just eat your edible and faint in peace. Like why why does the right? ambulance need Don't to get take involved? Me away. I'll I, mean, I was like why? I was out for like sixty seconds. So they were that's like people were oh, scared. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. very yeah. scary. That is long, yeah. yeah. And then like I think when you when you ingest weed as like an edible, you can have hallucinogenic effects. So oh. I was tripping too. Wow. I remember being in like the ambulance and I was like, This is VIP. They gave me a break and everything. I didn't know they were gonna send me a two thousand dollar bill oh my because gosh. my insurance is garbage. And then they didn't take me to ER. They took me to urgent care, which my insurance did not cover. Are you kidding? Yeah. If they're going to put you in an ambulance, why would they take the you ER. to urgent care? Why? That is that makes zero sense. Because it makes money for them. Yeah. Like man, and, it's. I was talking to an Uber driver the other day because I had asked. So I like I. I was making jokes about me giving birth in the back seat because I. I like to joke around about yeah. being one of those people that like I don't know I'm pregnant and all of a sudden I have like a nine month. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm just, oh so god. And I'm, I still I'm, don't so, believe that show. I don't believe the premise of that show. But it's still a very big fear of mine. What if it's just like I'm? What if you're pregnant, pregnant and you don't and know? No, I'm. So it's very scary. So I mean, your body tells it. you if you're pregnant. I you know? guess. I mean, I don't some know. people keep their period during their pregnancy. I also like six months. I, I, so I, I don't have a period. I don't, I don't have an do one. It. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then how would Wait, you Wait, know? with an IUD, you never... I thought you still get a period. Not the one I got. I got jumbo hormones up oh, inside of me. Snap. Jumbo hormones. TM. But they were saying <laughs> they were saying that um, that <laughs> Uber drivers bunches. have to pick up people that don't want to use... to have to pay yeah, for an yeah, ambulance yeah. Yeah. a lot. I've done that. Yeah. I've taken an Uber to the emergency room before because yeah, yeah. I'm like, the Smarter. ambulance is going to cost me more than this $7 Uber ride. Yeah. They have to have like emergency tarps in the back. Yeah. And you know what? What? It's easier and faster because if yeah. you call an ambulance, you might die before the ambulance comes, especially in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, yes. and I want to die in the back of K Carol's car. And also, she can't figure out the also, GPS. Hey, I want so, it to be personal. Okay. I want Carol to know where I live Speaking and not of, take me to the hospital okay. and teach me about her grandchildren and ask me what ethnicity I am. That's what I. That's how I want to die. Hell yeah! And also, I don't want to. So I thought you wanted to die on heroin. Oh, you're yeah. really old. That's true. I well, no, I want to do heroin, like Little Miss Sunshine. I, I, that, I don't remember. I, I want to do heroin and then come down from it and then have like a regular natural death, like which is I also have, a high. Yeah, I want to compare the highs right before I go. Oh, greedy, yeah. greedy, That's greedy. Good. I want it. But I want then it. How oh. are you going to document it? Does, I don't need to document that, it. It's for my brain. It's well, like me. I feel like as a scientist, you would want someone to be there to document how this is going. Right. Nah, bitch. You that know? one's for me. I'm dying by myself. Okay. I want to be alone and peaceful. You're not dying for science. Got it. Dudes online that but, are bitter. But are you donating like, your body? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, if they want it after the heroin. Yeah, but I it, mean, I feel like that's a selfish way to go, you yeah. know, like as a scientist, you know. No, you can use like your eyes or something, right? Even if Bitch, you're I don't care. I've been in science for so long. Use my work. I'm tired. <laughs> don't use your body. I think I, that's why when guys online are like angry at me for the shit that I post because I say a lot of shit about men and they're like, you're just going to die alone. You don't settle for anybody. And I was like, fucking yeah, that's what I want to do. That's exactly what I, I want to be by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Cut we all we die alone. Like that's I don't understand that. Yeah, I was gonna know. say if like some kid is walking around, they see you in a bodies exhibit, like yeah, to seventy years. I'd be from so now. fucking pissed. I'd be so mad because <laughs> like, like I worked so hard. Chinese bodies, dude. I went to one, it. and they I, were. I they, went gone to one too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and they literally had two bodies doing intercourse, so you could see like the penis inside, Ooh. and it's just like oh, I mean. It's, it's Yo, actually, educational. Actually, but I'd be fine if I died fucking. Wait, like, hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah. They it's probably it's had to preserve like, my body after. Yeah. Open that they're shit like, up. That bitch fucked, even <laughs> in the afterlife. Oh, yeah, but you're not She's wet, though. Come <laughs> How do they get it in there? 
<laughs> I know, it seems terrible. How did they you, find that? Did they do that after? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, they That's, 100% do okay. that. Oh my God, I wish I was in a They died fucking in the right? And they're like, don't move them. This is how they wanted to <laughs> This is how I want to die. That's like the epitome of like coming at the same time. It's like dying at the same time Hell while yeah. fucking. Oh, Hell yeah. That's goals. the love that, that I want. Relationship goals. That's what the notebook really needed. That, yeah. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought of. James Garner just climbs on top of her. And they fucking die at the same time. That's not necrophilia if you're both dead. No, yeah. exactly. If you did it at the same time. <laughs> but then you both have to die at the same time. Because if it was like there was but a minute difference. that's how hard you yeah. come. You yeah. come so hard, you, you die. die. Like, what if you it's both just... You've hit the apex. There's nothing left. I mean, at that point... <laughs> I'm ready for my next life. Just... I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> it is very common. Genum. Oh <laughs> the next genum. Um, <laughs> coming. Everything pales in comparison to this one come, I'm dead. <laughs> Maybe that's what my life is leading up to. Maybe that's what all this is for. <laughs> Just to come hard with a, with someone that I love and die at the same time. <laughs> Man, that sounds great. I want to put that in my will. It's like if I not die, if I don't die, fucking just insert something into yeah. me so it looks like I just want the kids to think I'm cool. She came to death. At least she came. <laughs> we should ask doing people. what she fucked. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even specify what you want stuck up in there. Just, just something. something that makes me come. <laughs> Oh man! We'll, we'll bury you with your vibrator. There, there you oh go. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, anything with a slight never, curve. Oh yeah, it'll be fine. fine. <laughs> I've tried a bonsai tree before. They're not what? fun. Stop Why it! Pull that shit How? out. Now. See, I didn't put it all the way inside, and more just like rubbed on it in between uh, my oh, legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it. so then I tried. I mean, have to put, we not all trimmed a bonsai tree thing. that way? Yeah. <laughs> I tried to put it inside of me a little bit, but it was just no. too bristly. How old were you? It was too uh, like eleven. Yeah, <laughs> it was too. You were, you were experimenting. Yeah. You know, you didn't know your orientation her, yet. Uh, with a notebook, she was like, "Bonsai tree, too bristly." Yeah. <laughs> I would Man, love that Anna, can't fuck. Just right. <laughs> yeah. I would love to read your diaries. <laughs> oh my goodness. See, at least you oh, so, document. So you things. really meant it when you said Hakuna ma fuck it. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. All right, I think we should wrap. Oh, up. Good circle. one to go out on. So I think dying while coming is a good way to go out on. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, now so I got to Does any of your sketch comedy focus around like dying while coming? Or, <laughs> I'm I mean, sure I that just... it does. We did comedy for we did sketch for about ten years, so wow. we, we've got we've got thousands of sketches that we've written. So I think I'm sure there's something in there. But it's also why like part of my brain is all screwed up because I also played my brother's wife many many times. Oh, no. We just don't touch. Okay, good. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> in, in general. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a couple questions for you. Okay. One of our questions is who is your favorite South Asian celebrity? Ooh. Hmm. So I'll just tell you the country. You know the country. Well, India, Pakistan. Yeah. Bangladesh. She's from Queens. She knows. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know the countries. She's, she's like Jennifer think. Lopez. <laughs> I want Jenny. She's from the block, right? right? Yeah, she's from the Bronx. Yeah. On the six. Yeah, it's a, I that's can't a think of any names. Hassan Minaj, Aziz Ansari, Mindy Kaling, not, Hari, not Aziz Ansari, Hari that's for sure. Oh, I do love Mindy Kaling though. Or why? Why is that bad to say? No, Am I no. not allowed to say that? No, it's just like I just no feel such answer. a connection with you right now because oh, okay. we have so many things in common, including mutual dislike. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that's that's a whole other fucking ball game. Mindy Kaling, I'm uh, absolutely obsessed with. Yay. I've I've read her. I've read her books. Also, her yeah. audio book is fucking amazing. Her audio book is. Check it out good. because yeah. it's just it's also just watching someone that went from like all, a, a sketch background as well into yeah. being what she is not only like a producer a writer an actress that she can do she's all of friends it friends with oprah and it's insane though the fact that she's also like slamming out kids and having like and she's doing everything that i've ever wanted and to so do chill. in life and i don't understand how because i've watched many interviews with her and i know a bunch of people that have worked with her and everyone's just like she actually is just as chill as you would imagine her to be. I saw that she has time for brunch. How do you have time for brunch? I don't know. If you love brunch, you make time for brunch. You know, yeah. that's all I'm saying. Did you see um, her brother? Do you know what her brother's deal is? No. Her brother pretended to be black to get into med school. He like cut his eyelashes, shaved his head, and then he wrote a book about it. And then he started a company to get kids into med school after he dropped out. So he took someone's position and then he like dropped out of med school because it all came out. <laughs> it was like a Rachel wow. Dolezal moment. Whoa. But she 
like had a falling out with him because of all that. Like oh she, my God. and then he, he brought her name into his book or so. I don't know. But they're like, they're not like on the same page about this. Oh obviously. my so they're God. Estranged. But he's famous for other reasons. I don't know if they're yeah. still estranged, but are you yeah. saying that Indians invented this whole like college cheating scandal <laughs> and now Aunt Becky's just getting blamed for it? <laughs> like, Man, the, the fact that she's getting sued for $500 billion. Was, is it billion? The, that, that's a billion. The, it's, that's a wow. her individually or it's a class action. She, she is getting by one person, on one mother action. whose son didn't get into uh, the, like the Ivy League schools that he applied to, even though her son had a 4.2. I had a 4.8 and I barely got into Tish. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. this is, like that's ridiculous. Where did that number yeah. come from? The, the, I don't know. They just made it up because she decided to put together all Priceless. of the money that that like that her son, her son could have made. made over time, which also $500 billion. That's, I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> like, who's you know what? Mark Zuckerberg dropped out and he did fine yeah, you know it's fine. so it's, i just We're feel like mark zuckerberg yeah. <laughs> okay but like you're but like you would have to be so exceptional you know to get to 500 billion when there's people who have you know like lower or higher iqs that aren't making that so yeah. like, or higher gpas or whatever yeah but. it's just it, it's uh, i think that all of that is i mean it's ridiculous. It, it, I also don't even. It's not going to stop. It's not no. going to stop any There's, rich people. They're going to find another way of, to do it, re- regardless of color, regardless yeah. of like of gender, regardless of anything. Yeah. It's like rich people are always going to be shitheads, no matter what, and they're going to pay to get whatever they want, mm-hmm. no matter what. But that's were, just how going to happen. There were quite a few parents though, so why target um, Becky? Well, it's because they were celebrities. That's why. That's the only reason they There's put a couple you, celebrities. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah they, they target. Hoffman. They put them in the in the headlines because they're celebrities, and that's. Why they also put USC in the headline because USC, I go there. It's it, not an Ivy League school. Like yeah. it's, it's not an Ivy League school, but a lot of celebrities' kids. kids go that's, there. that's what I'm you saying. Know? So they Aunt, have the Aunt money. Becky's daughter went there and she dropped out. I was getting all the USC emails that are like, "We're a victim in this. We haven't been prosecuted." I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then they were like, "We're gonna deal with this," and they put out all these things. And it's be, and the only reason they were like highlighted is because it's Southern California. All the yep. celebrities' kids go there. Yeah. yeah. So Mindy Kaling. Yes. Long story short, Mindy yeah. Kaling, yeah. Kaling yeah. our yeah. favorite South Asian celebrity. Uh, next, last question. Uh, we do you. So this is a safe space. Okay. Uh, we often get asked, like, do you dumb, believe us? Oh you, God, I think so. Is, <laughs> don't worry. We often get asked like dumb questions about our ethnicity, and so we want to know if you have any questions that you might feel too embarrassed or like cautious to ask. But it's like this is your opportunity. It's a judgment-free zone. Yeah, we're very open-minded in this segment. I mean. In this segment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what kind of question? Like, I, I can't even imagine a question that I wouldn't feel comfortable well, you asking. also, like, yeah. you, you were raised in Queens. Are you, yeah. So yeah. You were, I feel like you've been exposed to so much of it that you may not have well, questions or no answers to. Well, having been around a lot of South Asians, were there any questions you overheard that were... Super dumb. That, yeah. that were very upsetting. Um, or just, you know, ignorant. I mean, it was always it was something that, like, happened, I feel like, a lot with, like... My friends, especially in Queens, was like how not just like just any like any person that was diverse smelled different than they did. And that was always an interesting thing that I remember a friend of mine asked, like, well, like, what does your mom cook? What is it like skunk or something? Why do you oh, always smell so different shitty. than the way we smell? Which is ridiculous because like my mom is like Italian, Italian, Italian. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, I'm covered in butter and cheese at all times. And no one's asking me. <laughs> and these there's also questions. like fried onions and herbs and a lot of things going on in that kitchen too. Yeah. You know? And it's just so. like, I feel like if that was always an issue that like, yeah. that was something that, but that was, those was the kind of things that I never understood. Like how you could even ask someone that question of like, what kind of, did, did you guys ever get asked that question of like, what kind of food does your, do your parents make? There's definitely yeah. the stereotype of the smelling smelly, like curry, yeah. dirty, yeah. that stuff. Well, I would get made fun of like I was so afraid to eat sometimes whenever like my mom would send me like kebabs or whatever because they're like oh she's eating poop I'm like they're it's kebabs like what like I'm sure they all feel dumb and stupid now because like Middle Eastern Mediterranean food is like very in right now but it's like you're you're like bullying a child so she's afraid to eat in front of you like during lunchtime like that's not okay yeah so yeah yeah I mean I I, I mean in a very different way but it's like my mom would pack actual like like 
chicken parmesan, yeah. like into a big Tupperware for me and to take. And that's totally okay. Which, but that's, but still, still, that's still considered like American food. Yeah. I still got yeah. like, made fun yeah. of though because it wasn't a sandwich yeah. and because yeah. I didn't, because we couldn't afford for me to like get food at in the lunchroom. Oh, no and way. Like that. No so way it's were like, we just getting food in the lunchroom. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I was sent with food. So that's like, that, like I became like really like, not a not so much a bully, but like no one fucked with me because I would like make them feel horrible about themselves. Yeah. Like I'd be like, why don't you just go eat your poor peanut butter sandwich that your Fucking stepmom idiot. made because your mom hates you and left. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so yeah. Sorry. That triggered me. I that know. that whole it, like food convert like it triggered it out, me girl. because that's you know, wrong. Yeah. It was definitely a thing. Or so thank you for bringing that it's up. Hurtful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's um yeah I mean all the cool kids ate like tater tots from the cafeteria right that was like the oh, thing dude, buy yeah. lunch, tater get tots the pizza were fire. Tater the I always wanted to be able to get the lunch tots which is too. ridiculous like the food I had was way delicious. better so much better yeah. than the tater tots yeah but I would still get shit Grasses, for it right yeah. well I guess it's like you're carrying around the lunch for like hours before you get to lunch so yeah it is definitely yeah then you because then I would smell you know what people are cranky yeah. when they're hungry maybe they smell this delicious food and they're just hungry that's probably that what it is yeah. Yeah. I'm hungry yeah. Where can we find you online? Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Jack That Worm. Um, you can look me up on the last podcast network. My big show is called Page Seven. It's uh, it, we do like pop culture news Fun. as well as just it's more of like a big fun sleepover more cool. than anything Yay. and soon we'll be having a bunch of other new stuff coming out of the LPN world which will be a lot of fun and possibly a reboot of Sex and Other Human Activities which was my sex and mental health advice podcast cool. Ooh, so cool very cool are you still doing the round table one um no not as of right now okay yeah, right, cool. 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 And uh, our socials are facial recognition comedy on Instagram and Facebook, facial rec comedy on Twitter, facial recognition comedy dot com. Uh, I'm Fizzadasani, F I Z A A D O S A N I on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Fizzadasani dot com. I'm Paula Viganalan, P A L L A V I G U N A L A N on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and that's also my website. And uh, I'm really Zara on all the things. Zara is spelled Z A H R A. And uh, you can see us at Westside Comedy Theater every month in Santa Monica, the second Sunday at 9 p.m. And uh, New York and OC, keep an eye out. We are going to bring our shows there Ooh. again. Ooh. And we got awesome. merch. We got shirts. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you Thank so you guys. Much. Thank you guys so much Thank for you. having me.